Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Magic Pill Monday and today we're looking at NAC and we're gonna look at the science behind this supplement to see if it's worth buying, if it's able to help your performance or help you with certain health problems or if it's going to be a waste of money. Now let's dive into it straight away. Why would you supplement NAC? Well, NAC is one of those supplements that cannot be found in food. So you cannot really just focus on particular foods to get this nutrient. You really have to get it from a supplement. It can help with a variety of different things. The main ones are listed here. So one is lung disease and specifically lung disease that involves mucus. So some people have this mucus built up in their lungs, which makes breathing very difficult. And NAC can actually help with that and alleviate symptoms. It is also useful for mental health conditions, both in terms of depression and bipolar disease, but also when you're trying to quit an addiction. And we're gonna look at some interesting studies that show that. Besides that, it's also being studied for longevity, which is quite interesting, and it may be able to improve fertility. So before I dive into the science, just as always, I will put the timestamps for this video down below in the description, so you can just jump to the part of the video that is most interesting to you, because I wanna make it as convenient as possible for you to get the knowledge that you want from this video and you don't have to watch the entire video through to get that knowledge and of course i will also put all the links for all the studies that i used down in the description so if you ever doubt something i say or if you want to check something you can just look at the studies yourself or you can just use the video as a resource of knowledge so how does nac really work well nac is shown on the left here just provides actually a building block called cysteine and together with glycine and glutamate, it forms glutathione, which is the main master antioxidant in our body and can help our health in multiple ways. Now, when you look at this graph, you might say, why don't we just supplement glutathione directly? And it seems from study that glutathione has a very low bioavailability when we supplement it directly. So that does not really seem a good option if you want to increase your glutathione levels then you might say, why don't we supplement cysteine instead of NAC? And cysteine has also been shown in research to be a very unstable supplement. So it seems that the only way to get our glutathione levels up is to supplement NAC and make sure that our body has plenty of glycine and glutamate. So we have all the building blocks to produce glutathione. Now let's dive into the research around NAC and see what the benefits really are. So let's start off with the lungs. Here we have a meta-analysis, which is just a large study that combines the findings of many studies. So in this case, 15 studies with 1,605 patients, and they were looking specifically at a lung disease called acute exacerbation of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And they were taking about 600 milligrams a day on average in these 15 studies. And they were looking at will it improve people that are suffering from this specific lung disease and it says the following here our meta-analysis confirmed that nac could promote the symptom improvement rate of patients with this disease improve lung function in fev1 and enhance the body's antioxidant capacity now you may say what is fev1 and this is basically the amount of air a person can forcefully exhale from their lungs in one second so you can imagine if somebody has some breathing problems because of a lung issue they may not be able to really inhale deeply and exhale deeply or exhale with a lot of force. And it seems that when people take NAC, when they suffer from this lung disease, this measure improves significantly. Here we have another study and they look at a different type of lung disease, namely chronic bronchitis. And it's again a meta-analysis. This time they're looking at 11 studies with a total of 775 patients and they're taking about 600 milligrams a day on average in these studies. Here we see the findings of this meta-analysis. NAC reduced the frequency of exacerbations. So basically, people that were taking NAC had less often symptoms of chronic bronchitis. Patients treated with NAC had significant symptom improvement compared with controls, and NAC did not significantly increase the risk of adverse effects compared with placebo. So in other words, NAC improved the symptoms and lowered the frequency of symptoms, but did not have any significant side effects. So great outcome for people with lung disease. And it really seems that NAC can help people with several different kinds of lung disease. So even maybe if you have 
some issues with your lungs, but it's not really diagnosed as a real disease, it might be that NAC can help you improve your situation. The next benefit of NAC is that it seems to be able to help people quit their addictions. And it has actually been studied for several different addictions. So let's go through a couple of studies. Here we have a randomized control trial and they're looking at smokers in this case, taking quite a large amount, 2,400 milligrams a day for four weeks. And here they found that NAC reduced the number of cigarettes smoked in nicotine dependent individuals. So people that were taking NAC didn't really need to smoke as much as they used to before. So it can really help people that are smoking to quit their addiction or to lower their cigarette intake. The next addiction it seems to be able to help with is cocaine. And in this study, they, it is a small study, but they looked at 13 cocaine addicts that were taken into a hospital for three days where they got 1200 milligrams daily of NAC. And they found that there was a trend for a greater reduction in withdrawal symptoms and craving within the NAC group. So people that were taking NAC, they didn't have this as much withdrawal symptoms and they also didn't really crave cocaine as much as the people that were not taking NAC. So again, it, it seems that NAC can help people more easily quit cocaine addiction. And the final addiction that we're going to look at this time is marijuana. And in this study, we have 24 addicts that were taking 2,400 milligrams daily for four weeks. And they had to fill in a certain questionnaire called the Marijuana Craving Questionnaire, MCQ. And the study provided the following conclusion. Participants reported significantly reduced ratings on three of the four MCQ domains over the course of the NAC treatment. Now, in easy words, we can just say that what the study showed is that people that were taking NAC had a significantly reduced craving to marijuana. So what we can see from all of these three studies is that it seems that people that are taking NAC simply have a lower desire for the substance they are addicted to, whether that is nicotine, marijuana, or cocaine. So it seems to be a very interesting drug in that sense that it can actually make it easier for people to quit an addiction. Benefit number three is mental health. And here we have a meta-analysis where NAC has been studied on people that are suffering from bipolar depression. And in this case, we are combining six trials with a total of 248 patients taking about 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams daily of NAC. And we read the following from the study. Our results suggest that treatment augmentation with NAC for bipolar depression appears to be superior to placebo with a moderate effect size, but a large confidence interval. This means that NAC could be on average highly beneficial or not efficacious at all, depending on moderating factors that we are unable to identify. Now to put this in simple words, what it means is that on average, they do see that NAC has a beneficial effect on people suffering from bipolar depression. However, some people see a very large positive effect and some people see no effect at all. And they are not sure what are the variables that are causing some people to have a great benefit from it and some people not. But in general, the, the trend is that NSC can help people with bipolar depression to see an improvement in their symptoms. The second study here is a review where they are looking specifically at depressive symptoms. And it combines five studies with a total of 574 patients, which have been taking NAC from 12 to 24 weeks. Now I couldn't find any mention of the dosage, but it's very likely that it's in similar ranges of what we have seen before, somewhere between a thousand to a 3000 milligrams per day for the duration of the 12 to 24 weeks. And what we read in the conclusion is that administration of NAC ameliorates depressive symptoms improves functionality and shows good tolerability. So similar to the previous study we looked at, it seems that in general, NSC can really help people with depression, see an improvement in their symptoms. And generally it doesn't really have any negative side effects. So even if it doesn't work for you as an individual, it is at least worth a try because there is not really a risk of taking it. Now the fourth benefit of NSC is a very specific one, namely lead poisoning. And it has been researched on 171 men that had high exposure to lead. And they were either taking 200, 400 or 800 milligrams a day. So they were divided into several groups and they were doing that for 12 weeks. And what they saw was that people taking NSC had a reduction in blood concentrations of lead by 
about 5%. And they also saw a reduction in something called erocytic lipofuscin, which is simply a result of lead poisoning or lead toxicity. So overall, they saw a reduction in lead blood concentrations and also in the side effects of lead toxicity. And the fifth benefit of NAC is that it can help with slowing down aging and lowering inflammation. So here we have a study of 40 obese adults taking 600 milligrams a day for four weeks. And they saw a lowering in inflammatory markers such as interleukin-6 and C-reactive protein, an improvement in fasting blood sugar, an improvement in insulin resistance, and a significant reduction in SA beta gall activity. And you might think, what the hell is that? Well, to make it really simple, this is just a metric of aging of your cells. And if it's reducing, that means that you are basically increasing your longevity, you're aging slower. So that is a good thing. And in that sense, it really seems that NAC can just benefit our health overall and our longevity overall, because it is lowering this metric of aging, but it's also lowering inflammatory markers and improving our blood sugar status, which are all involved in the chronic diseases that are causing most of the deaths nowadays. And the sixth and final benefit of NAC we're going to talk about is how it can benefit fertility. Here we have a meta-analysis that combines seven trials with a total of 621 men that were dealing with fertility problems. And they were taking about 600 to 2000 milligrams a day of NAC for three to six months. And they saw improvement in many different aspects of sperm, namely sperm motility, sperm morphology, sperm concentration, and they also saw an increase in ejaculation volume. So what are the risks and downsides of NAC? Well, there are actually a few worth mentioning that are quite serious. The first is that many people experience digestive upset from taking NAC, especially from taking high dosages. The second one is that some people report that when they take NAC, especially for a long time, they feel emotionally numb. And this might have to do with how NSC also has a small influence on neurotransmitters, specifically glutamate. And it can somehow, for some people apparently, mess up the balance of neurotransmitters in such a way that people experience what they call anhedonia, which is just basically feeling emotionally numb. Now, this is not a very well-researched phenomena, but it is something that a lot of people online are reporting about taking NAC. So it's definitely something to be aware of. And the final one is that it seems that NAC can increase histamine because NAC opposes another molecule called DAO. And a DAO helps with breaking down histamine. So if you oppose DAO, you will have more histamine activity in your body. And increased histamine can cause allergies or allergic-like reactions to become worse. So that's definitely something to be aware of. Of course, the reactions, the side effects that people experience really differs per person. So just start off with a small dosage. See if you experience any of the side effects before you start increasing. And just be aware that these side effects may occur. Now, when it comes to the dosage and quality, you typically see dosages between 600 to 2000 milligrams a day. But the highest I've seen is about 3000 milligrams a day. Even though there is no upper limit known, I wouldn't exceed 3000 milligrams a day. It hasn't really been studied and there seems to be not really a benefit to exceeding that 3000 milligrams a day. Quality is not really a concern when it comes to NAC that I know of. So when to take NAC? Well, there are no guidelines available on when to take it exactly. But as I said earlier, it might be that NAC can mess with your digestion, can cause some digestive upset. So definitely experiment with it. Take it on an empty stomach, see how you react, or take it with a meal, see how you react. And based on that, go ahead. But it doesn't really seem like it makes a huge difference whether you take it with a meal or without. Now, some people do say that because N AC is sort of a form of an amino acid that when you take it with a huge meal, there is some competition going on between different proteins, amino acids for absorption, and that might mess up the absorption of the NAC. So if you really want to play it safe, take it on an empty stomach. Now the final verdict for NAC, I would give NAC an eight out of 10. I think it has a wide array of scientifically backed health benefits. We saw some great studies and it seems to be able to help many people with specific health issues, but also in general, it just seems to be a supplement that can help us with longevity and just increase our lifespan. 
Now, the reason I don't give it a 9 or 10 is because it does have some rough potential side effects like increasing histamine or making people feel emotionally numb, which are really things that could be so serious for people that they will not be able to take it at all. So that's how I come to 8 out of 10 and I think that's a fair grade. So that was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like. It really helps me out a ton. I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions regarding the video or if you want to give me some ideas for future videos that you would like to see, leave me a comment and I'd love to see you in the next video. Thank you and have a great day. Bye bye.